Hey there, happy day 1014 of What's She Up To Now. Sharon horn Nelson here with a terribly scary filter only because it shows all my wrinkles, but they're mine. They're my wrinkles, so I might as well show them. I am, I usually stay away from these uh, illustrated or cartoon or the black and white ones are really bad too. Some of them are some of the colors. Uh, filters that they have on Facebook. Facebook Live is where I'm recording this today because they show all my wrinkles and I don't necessarily want them all to be showing at least right out there in front of the world. So today, uh, what what am I up to? Sharon Hornalstrom, what's she up to now is all about documenting my journey as I transition from the brick and mortar world over a quarter century in corporate America to the online world. What's worked, what's what has epically failed because I'm not going to get on here and tell you that everything I've tried is is sugar and roses and and been awesome and I made a gazillion dollars on every single thing I tried the first time I tried it I mean if anybody's telling you that if you're believing all the hype and all the nonsense that you see online you're probably not going to want to listen to me because I will burst your bubble and say let's talk about how it really is let's talk about what's really important let's talk about how you can really achieve and do and be and have anything you want online or off but guess what? It's going to take a few things that people forget to tell you about, right? It's going to take you being committed. It's going to take you understanding and really deciding that I'm going to do this and I'm going to go for it and I'm going to create what it is that I want in my life because nobody can do it for you, right? We can, we can pay for certain things to be done for us, done for you, you services, but overall, if we want to create anything in our lives, guess what? It's up to us because nobody else cares about it as much as we do. So today, uh, Supersize Your Business was about uh, the idiom for the birds. For the birds, I actually didn't know that this came from the military and it was actually birds were observed pecking in poop to find corn, to get the corn out of the poop. And so uh, the soldiers created a bit of a vulgar expression that meant mm, is for the birds or mm, for the birds, meaning it was silly or ridiculous or it's not, it's worthless. It's not good for anything except the birds eating out of the poo. So, uh, <clears throat> That idiom then came to mean anything that's kind of worthless or uh, not of much value. So you think something of poor quality or something that doesn't work as it's supposed to work. I would say that's for the birds. And then there's a whole other side of for the birds where it's about what things are really for the birds. Meaning, And I looked into bird watching. I don't know anything about bird watching, but I got curious about it. And I said, hmm, I wonder how many bird watchers there are in the United States. I think they were like, I should look. I think it was like, I couldn't, I can't see my notes ever. I write them so I learn and remember things and I still don't remember them. Bird watching. It's $80 billion a year. And this was back in 2011. $80 billion is spent related to bird watching in America alone. I don't know about you, but I guess my mind is never wrapped around how big and what a huge impact small little hobbies and ideas and niches have in the overall scheme of things. I mean, when you hear $80 billion on bird watching, and of course some of that's travel related to going to places or bird watching, people actually have bird watching bucket lists where they have a list of birds that they wanna see in their lifetime. Who knew? I wouldn't have known if I wouldn't have looked into this idiom for the birds. So there's always the positive side of um, how can you be more open-minded and more aware of the things that you're not even aware of. And I think that's one of the things that we don't know what we don't know. We don't even know what we don't know because there's so much that is unknowable and, and, and that we've just never experienced it. I remember walking in the park and thinking, oh, there's people bird watching. And I'd see a lot of them actually. And I, I never thought really two cents about it. I thought, ah, oh, nerdy bird watchers. Okay. It's kind of like people that, that look for plants and different types of trees and things. There, there's a, a whole slew of people that actually are interested in those things. And if you are too, you can actually make a living doing that. Who knew? I guess, you know, the people that tell you you need to niche down, you really need to be specific, aren't fibbing to you or aren't fibbing to me. So supersize your business today for the birds. I thought, I found it really fascinating. I, I really, that I actually thought about, well, what's my favorite bird? What's my least favorite bird? And I think that's something to think about. And <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> maybe my excuse is that my vision is bad. So I, I actually have a hard time even actually seeing birds. So for me, a visual hobby like bird watching or a, vis a visual activity like bird watching has its own set of challenges, which is maybe part of why I never thought about it before. But it reminded me that we have to be open-minded and we have to be curious about things that we might not have ever been curious about before because that's how we learn and we grow. 
Uh, so for the birds, visualization or picture this, picture this. It's kind of why I drew the drawing one too. It's not really a picture, but isn't there a dance or something like that? Obviously not a dancer, don't know it, but uh, picture this uh, was our No Nonsense November Day 7, sharing a tool a day that is actually absolutely life transforming, life changing, life changing tools that everybody can use. It's, it's free to visualize, right? It's free to be grateful. It's free to, you can create your own flip book, but you can create a flip book in your mind. Um, so everything I've shared so far is in 100% free tool or strategy or technique that, that anyone can use to, to create the life they want, to get what they want, to make transformation and change in their life and to make it um, almost seamless. If you create and, and follow some of these tools or use these tools, you can make progress like that will feel miraculous to you and will look miraculous to other people outside of you because they'll have no idea how you're doing the things that you're doing because they, they look impossible to other people, although they're possible because you're not just using one or two of these tools, you're building these tools into your life if you're smart and you're making them habitual or part of your daily routine so that they have a cumulative effect on you and the results that you're able to get. How do I know? It's what I've done to, to get through and function in my life, even during the toughest times and the most challenging times in my life. So today was all about visualization. Um, fun challenge today was about normal, not being normal, because if you're so focused on being normal all the time, or average, I say, then <clears throat> you're missing out on how and and your ability to actually be amazing and stand out in certain areas or aspects of your life. So that was it. Finish up the <clears throat> uh, two-day training from Jim Edwards because normally this week with the gym boat, we would be on a cruise of the Caribbean, but with the pandemic, no cruises. So instead of just foregoing it, he actually did the training live. And the, the interesting thing that I noted and I'm seeing, and, and if you're not seeing this and, and you're wanting to do something in the online world, you ought to be really taking note of this. People that used to do events, live events, and spend hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars on those events are finding that they can now do these events virtually. And instead of appealing to maybe a, a few thousand people or a, or a few hundred people or a few thousand people, they're actually massively increasing their reach and their impact and the number of people that can actually attend their events, which is again on the back end, causing them to have phenomenal sales, phenomenal years of their, their higher ticket offers and items because it's more people are being exposed to it. And since people haven't had to spend $5,000 on travel to attend the event or thousands of dollars on travel to the, attend the event, they now have that money and those resources to spend on the high ticket item on the back end. This is going on like gangbusters in the online world. And you can do it in the offline world too. You can find ways to create events for your client base, for your customers that are online and, and cost you little to nothing to, to put on and then offer people more of your products and services on the back end. And you can reach more people than you would ever be able to if you were physically calling people together for a workshop or an event or anything. I've been doing online events for a couple of years now. I don't think my first year, I'm trying to think my first year online, if I did any, a webinar, I guess a webinar is an online event. I did do a couple of webinars my first year, but <clears throat> I'm trying to think if I did any other online events. And I think, well, I don't think it was till my second year that I did any workshops or summits or things online. So, but they're all available and the technology has gotten just easier and better. The pandemic has pushed online learning from a, an aside to absolutely positively the way you have to go, the way you, the way you have to present your information material. And the benefits to that, you know, the speakers, the people that are whining because they haven't been able to get on physical stages, if they haven't transitioned to, to virtual stages, they that's up to them and they're totally missing the boat because the virtual stages can reach more people than they could ever reach um, in a physical location or in a physical stage. You know, even filling a stadium, you know, uh, Grant Cardone's 10X events, you know, 10,000 people or 30,000 people and growing. Uh, obviously couldn't do that this year, but even if you're in front of 30,000 people at an event like that, you could still reach, you could reach 100,000 people online for a fraction of the cost. And you don't have to give 50% of your proceeds to 
the promoter, right? So there's always things that we don't know about and there's always solutions to anything that we face. Anything that comes up, there's always a way to figure it out. So I did that two day training. It's a long way around, did that two day training and I'm now committing to myself to get <laughs> sister who's been gone for over a month in Florida. So I want to talk to her, but I want to finish this first. So uh, that, that's what I'm working on. That's what's going on. If I can help you in any way, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow with a little update on what I'm working on, what's working, what's not, what's fun, what's not. You know, as 2020 drags on, get up and go challenge. I'm going to do that again December 1st through the end of the year. Uh, because I think it's important for me and for everyone else to finish this year as strongly as we possibly can. And that involves knowing that no matter what happens, we have the ability to get up and move on and take action and keep going toward the things that we want in our life. Doesn't matter what's going on in our environment. Doesn't matter at all. Doesn't matter if there's a, a pandemic. It doesn't matter if uh, there's a an upheaval in our <laughs> What matters is how we respond to everything. All right. Have an awesome day. Catch you tomorrow. Bye. It won't be a cartoon tomorrow, a, a, a wrinkly cartoon.